Hello and welcome to part three of this gameplay playthrough of Time of Legends Destinies coming from Lucky Duck and Mythic Games from Michal Golubioski and Filip Milanski coming to Kickstarter on 24th September 2019 and this is done with prototype components and this is part three of our playthrough. If you haven't seen the other two parts it might be worth going back and checking them out on our channel and if you just want to know the rules we've done a pit stop but we are going to continue on day 11 of this story of the howl with our herbalist who is trying to fulfill her destiny has found this key and is looking for some holy catacombs over here by a ruined abbey which she just trashed and the deserter here who has gone to the manor house of the lord that he had deserted from and freed his wife and discovered that this knight here who's running around the place is definitely caught up in some demonic rituals and i think the deserter has mind made his mind up to stop him in any way that he can so we're on to day 11 we've done 10 days so far and it's the herbalist's turn and as usual they would refresh an effort dice at the beginning of their turn but they've got all three of them up there so the only point of interest in this area left now that we've destroyed that presbyterium is a mausoleum so let's go and have a look there you approach the small mausoleum bearing marks of the cross carved into it it crumbles slightly under the weight of time even the stone floor cracked and gave way here and there an old stone sarcophagus stands at the center of the mausoleum. So investigate the mausoleum is an intelligence. We're quite good, but this is quite important. So I'm gonna put an, a die in there and I can re-roll effort dies when I do intelligence tests as per my tarot card that I found. That is a five, that's only gonna give me one. So I am gonna re-roll this one. I really hope I get lucky. It's an automatic success but it takes away from my one up there. So I've only got one. That is not great, confirm. You notice scratches on the stone floor. Seems like this sarcophagus can be moved aside. Old abbeys have their secrets, but do you, but how do you move it? Gain an experience. Okay. I can try and move the sarcophagus with something. I've got I lose that effort die. I've got a chalice, a bloodhound, a crucifix, a card, or a key. Unless the bloodhound can move it for me. I mean, it's possible. We could just take this down here and give this a scan and say, go on then, doggy. How are you at moving, sarcophagi? You tie your faithful companions to the sarcophagus and together, pushing and pulling, you manage to move the heavy stone. You uncover a set of stairs leading down. You are a good dog. Well done. And I get an experience point for that. So now I've got three. So with those three, I am going to put, because this has all been intelligent so far, I'm going to it. I'm going to put a five intelligence on there and spend those experience straight away. I'm very impressed with that dog. Thank God we spent seven months at that well trying to rescue it. Now. Descend the stairs hidden in the sarcophagus. Yes, please. As you descend into the catacombs, your light casts long shadows upon the walls of the corridor. You descend into the catacombs. The place has been desecrated. Occult symbols mark the walls of the dungeon. Three comfortable chairs adorned with pillows have been set up around. You notice a small desk with sheets of paper. At the end of the room, a short corridor leads to the door with a big keyhole. Another set of occult signs marks the door. The keyhole is adorned with silver ornaments of praying monks. I can investigate the papers, open the door with, or force the door open. So I'll investigate the papers first. Doesn't cost anything. Among undecipherable occult scribblings, you find a simple calendar. Seems like secret meetings were held here once a month. Sadly, the list of attendants consists only of initials, Lady A, Monsieur R, and Sir J. And the details of their meetings are too distasteful to quote. Well, that's unpleasant. Open the door with, hopefully, this is where ornamental key comes into its own. Open the door with, the key slides in with ease. Fantastic. The lock works surprisingly smoothly. Inside, drowned in an eerie green light, stands a pedestal upon which an occult folio lies. Its cover is adorned with runes. You can feel an aura of unholy power around the book. Perplexed, you hesitantly pick up the book. You can feel its foulness as you touch it. Gain two experience and the occult folio. Let's have a look. Oh, I'm gonna have to replace something with this. And I think given all what's going on with the unholy and the rest of it, this tarot card might have to go. So I'll put that there for someone else to pick up. 
and I'll put in the occult folio and the tarot boost to intelligence, which was on the nine, becomes a four. And I can push this across here to make me even smarter. Okay. The moment you take the folio, the ground starts to shake. You escape in panic. While you climb up the stairs, an avalanche of stones comes down, nearly crushing you. As soon as you are out and stop to take a calming breath, the mausoleum collapses. <laughs> You're just going around destroying things now. <laughs> There's going to be nothing left on the map. Remove the point of interest. Your turn ends. What is the herbalist going to do? I thought maybe we were going to find something down. Well, we did obviously find the folio, but what are we going to do with that? Okay. Time for consideration. The deserter. Refresh a die. Two because of what you have. Now, the deserter is definitely after this hunt but all we found out last time was that the hunt he's a bit demonic so i think perhaps it's time to explore a little and let's split the difference and go and explore this middle tile and see if we can find anything else out because he seems to be coming this way anyway so we will go to tile 10 yes we do please let's flip this over and move down there at the outskirts of Centilli, the snow-covered meadow turns into a forest in the south. On a mossy rock, a fat travelling monk is sitting, humming a lofty tune, a lofty one. And then, anything else? Another wolf. Okay, we've already beaten up one wolf, here's another one, slinking around the place. A jolly monk or a wolf? Well, we're quite unholy, so I think we're going to avoid the monk. We're just going to go straight for the wolf. Maybe... This is how the deserter does it. Just takes out the wolf one by one as he finds them. Because we found two now. Okay. Interact with the wolf. Yes. In the distance, you notice a lone wolf slinking through the woods. As you approach, it starts monitoring the surroundings. I can ambush the wolf, avoid any fights, or charge the wolf. So I'm going to try and ambush the wolf. I've got my five for my ritual mask. I'll add one effort die in there. So I've got a guarantee two successes. Ah. Just rolled a straight up success. So three successes, try and ambush a wolf. Your hasty arranged trap doesn't work as well as you expected. This sounds familiar. Yet the moment the wolf got distracted is enough for you to deal a fatal blow. So I gain experience and one of those bloody trophies again, which I don't want to carry with me. I've already abandoned one, so I'll abandon that one down there. Herbalists can pick that up if they want to. I can't see that they've done me much good so far. So the wolf goes. We're clearing out the walls from the area at least, and then my turn ends. Hmm. Deserter's now puzzled as to what the deserter should be doing. Hear ye, hear ye. As the full moon is upon us again, Sir Johann has decided to split his hunting party to cover more land. If you have any information about the werewolf, look for lone riders in the night. Sir Johann himself will search for the beast in the huntsman's forest. Right. So Sir Johann has split up from his men, and we're looking to get Sir Johan, so that sounds like it might be a good idea and he's in the huntsman's forest well there's two forest tiles unexplored this one has got some fog but I can't see anything on it this one's got some fog but I can see a hut yeah that looks like maybe where we're going and he's disappeared he's gone to one of those two right it is full moon that is bad because I'm guessing the werewolf is about to come out from somewhere herbalist i think we need some advice on what to do with what we found so that bishop was handy last time maybe we'll go back to this bishop after refreshing a die and ask about this unholy occult folio maybe so where are we we're coming back here to the church yes so dozens of townsfolk are still there, but the bishop is there and we can ask him about, and we'll ask him about this folio and hope that he will help us. Let's scan this in. Uh, there's stuff in Latin, this isn't gonna go well. Apage Satanas, what a monstrosity. Pater nostra qui es in calis, santificita nomen tum. That was less handy than I thought it might be. Okay, and if we do mass, we just get those three back, which we have already. Um, okay. <laughs> Herbalist, that wasn't the best move ever. Deserter, refresh your die. Two if you had two. So the Huntsman's Forest. We're going to go, we'll leave that 
Jolly Monk singing to whatever they want to sing. And we'll come over here and flip this over and see what we can find. Yes, we do. Mixed forest, so dense that even the snow was troubled invading the frozen ground beneath the dark trees. A small hut stands among the trees. It's probably the huntsman's home. Wow, I went the right place. There's a tall old tree with a hollow trunk nearby. Right. And Sir Johan's hunt as anticipated. Right, do we want to interact with either of those two places or go directly for the hunt? Um, let's go and see what the hunt's doing. Just, just keep banging on the same old drum, shall we? In the distance, you see a lonely figure on a horse. It must be Jahan, alone. Since the full moon, he's let his men look for the beast deeper in the forest. Okay, so I've got options here. I can ask Sir Jahan about something. I can ask him about the corrupted paw, the ritual mask, then he's going to know what I'm doing. I can collect the bounty for something. Well, maybe those trophies that I had, but I don't have them anymore. Or this is a new symbol to us. This is the destiny symbol. If I ambush Sir Johan, I start on my own path to actually winning the game and fulfilling my destiny. So I don't, I think I should just ambush him. If I show him these and he's going to know I'm coming. So. I'll just go straight for it. He's, he's not very clever, this guy. He's not very subtle. Let's ambush Sir Johan. What kind of weapon do you want to prepare? I'll resign for now from making an ambush. What kind of weapon do I want to prepare? Well, let's, let's be sneaky and try and poison him. Do we think that's possible? Let's have a look. This won't work as a weapon and you stand no chance against a skilled knight with bare hands. Your turn ends. Oh. So, I guess in, I'll try with my axe next time. It's day 13. Herbalist gets her stuff back. What is the Herbalist going to do with this occult folio? Interesting. So, obviously, it's all about Sir Jahan and he's summoning these demons. Mm. The bishop didn't work. I've been to see the priest. I'm going to try one last time to go to the church. I'm going to ask the random jolly monk what's going on. So we'll go here. Hello, jolly monk. On a mossy rock, humming a lofty tune, sits a fat traveling monk. Red face with a tonsure glistening in winter sun. He waves at you. He smiles as you approach. Seems like he's drinking wine from a water skin he's carrying. Okay. Might not be the occult expo I was after. Greets the monk. And peace be with you. Long have I seated on this rock and waited for one to come that I can support in their efforts. This blessed time has come. Your path is marked by growth and improvement. Witness this. Okay. Replace the point of interest with a massive angel. <laughs> right, there we go. Sudden blast of light makes you blind. You cover your eyes. After a while, when blindness goes away, you see the most magnificent creature you ever wondered about. Archangel floats in the air just above the rock. Lodged in that rock, you see an impressive sword. Well, you sound like you need an impressive sword. I'm not convinced an angel's going to give you a sword, though, for what you've been doing in the game. We want to find out about the folio. We must have found this for a reason. So I'm going to ask the angel about the folio as the herbalist here. And we get, oh, I'm only interested in deeds. Works of human hands bear no meaning to me, which is what the demon said up there, wasn't it? Try to pull the sword from the stone. You feel warmth when you touch the pure silver hilt of the sword. You pull with all your strength and you can feel that it moved a little, then it stops. It won't budge anymore. The archangel nods at you. You are on the right path, but not quite there yet. Do some good deeds and then come back. Then you might succeed. Okay. So we've got to do something good. Got it. End turn. Think of something good for the herbalist to do. Day 13, deserter, effort dice back. So we're going to try and attack Sir Johan maybe. 
with the axe. It's the only other thing I have. Amber Sir Johan with the axe. Okay, here we go. You've done well. Waiting for Jah Sir Jahan to send his party away, covering more ground. He rides alone now. It's a perfect moment for you to strike. Observing his route for the past few days, you are sure that he'll be passing this area soon. It's time to prepare for a fight. So first enhance the effectiveness of your weapon with. Use something to slow Jahan down or dig a pit and cover it with snow. Right. Maybe I can put the poison on my axe. See if that will work. With arms coated in poison, you suddenly feel a surge of confidence. This faithless dog does not deserve an honourable fight. Too true. Get rid of the poison, apparently. Use something to slow him down. I don't think any of this is going to slow him down, is it? Corrupted paw. It's got a charm on it. Maybe. Sure. I don't think it's going to do me any damage. Let's have a look now. That doesn't yield any effects and no one's very surprised. So my last thing now is to dig a pit and cover it with snow. This is a dexterity one. I'll take my five and I'm gonna add two here because I'm gonna get two back anyway. I don't know what's gonna happen after this. I might have to fight him, but I'm trying to get up to a seven. So three total on these and it's roll four, that's eight. So three successes. That should be good. You dig a hole in the frozen ground, place a bunch of bushes on top and carefully cover everything with snow. It should be enough. Now you just need to wait. Okay. You see movement in the distance. Sir Johan approaches, riding slowly through the snow drifts. He doesn't notice you. Now, how to lure him into your trap. So I can lead Johan into my trap using something. Or pretend to be a townsfolk crying for help. Well, I thought this might be his because it's a stallion. It's a noble horse. So maybe I can get him to follow the stallion. That's possible. Let's give that a go. Hiding in the bushes, you slap your horse. Its neighing is loud and clear. Well, I suppose I am the bad one. I, I didn't slap it very hard, don't worry. Sir Johan stops his horse and turns towards your hiding spot. You tighten the grip on your weapon, hoping for the knight to swallow the bait. And yes, he dismounts and walks towards you, sword in his hand, until he steps right where you wanted him. The trap is sprung and Sir Johan bellows his, in painful surprise. Yet still he brandishes his blade. Come out, you coward. I won't die that easily. It's a fight. Okay. Do I keep that ice your effort die? Fight with power. So the five gives me a guaranteed two. If I can roll a couple on here, this will be decent. I did roll exactly two. So seven with all this stuff gives me five successes. That sounds good. You charge the stunned knight with a mighty roar. He's reeling, but still dangerous. It takes all your might, all your skill to match his swordsmanship. A few strike seconds later, you find an opening and you strike, wounding him grievously, only to cry in pain as his sword pierces your thigh. You both fall onto the snow and then you lose consciousness. That isn't the best thing I ever heard. Your turn ends. Okay. First blow struck in the end game, I think, there by the deserter on Sir Jahan. The herbalist sounds like maybe she needs to do a good deed and then maybe she can get that sword out of the stone. So I'm thinking what good deed she can do quickly. And the blacksmith was after silver to make charms. Will that count? I can't think of anything else that's really pressing at the moment that could be done. Or pay the four money back to the innkeeper, but we still only got one. We didn't find anything else about that. So we're going to come across to the blacksmith from right back at the beginning of the game. A long time ago, he was trying to collect silver. Um, buy equipment, I've got any money. Steal something, definitely not, because I'm trying to be good here. Ask the blacksmith about. Might know something about some of this stuff. Um... Forge a silver dagger by using silver from. That could also be handy. Donate silver. Now I've got to make a decision on a playthrough quickly. Um, having a silver dagger is not a bad idea, is it? So forge a silver dagger. Let's use the crucifix for that, I think. Let's go there. Nice. Yes, I can do that for you. It won't be a sturdy steel, but if the legends are true, this weapon will work very well against a werewolf. That sounds good. 
discard that item and gain a silver dagger. Right. I can still do the other things. That's good. Um, ask the blacksmith about the folio. Will the blacksmith know much about it or about the bloodhound? He might know who owns the bloodhound. I don't think I want to lose the bloodhound. Uh, but let's donate silver because that's what we came here to do. And I think the chalice. Oh, when I threw away the crucifix, I lost that nine. But from this, I gained a five in power. That's good because this guy's fighting. Maybe I'll have to fight. So the silver chalice there. Yes, yes, this will do nicely. I'll be able to craft at least two dozen trinkets from this. That's good. Well, you help me, so I'll help you. If I reveal that you help me with the trinkets, they'll be more inclined to listen to you. Okay, but I lose my seven for intelligence for the silver chalice. That's gone. But I do gain one experience point. With so many people still grieving and looking back at what our town used to be, I guess one person is not enough to break the curse. Okay. So I can't donate any more silver, which was in my head. I can steal something, buy equipment, or ask the blacksmith about. I'm going to ask about this folio. I must have it for some reason. So ask the blacksmith about the cult folio. What's this? Can you see this carving here? It looks very similar to Sir Jahan's coat of arms. Okay. Nothing new, but we did something good. We still, we've got the silver dagger. We could just go straight down to Sir Jahan. Hmm. End turn. You sure you want to end the turn? Yes. Back to the deserter. You get two back because your crops are poor. You wake up, dazed and half frozen. Your wound is serious, but you've had worse. The trap is empty, but you see a bloody track and a corpse below the pine nearby. Your poison did the trick. You stand up in pain and step by step approach the body. A minute later, astonish, you look down upon a dead werewolf of Centilli. You win! The deserter after that horrible start and all those ones rolled. Finally did it. Let's read this conclusion here. Everyone was shocked when they saw that Sir Johan was indeed the werewolf himself. The deserter was praised for his bravery and the bishop rewarded him with the mansion of stables that once belonged to Sir Johan. Some say that Lady Ariane, Jahan's young wife, went there to visit from time to time, only to finally settle down with the old soldier. Well, there we go. Everyone's got a happy ending there. The herbalist, crushed by the futility of her actions and the never-ending circle of violence, joined the Romani and travelled east for some time. By the Mediterranean Sea, she boarded a ship and that was the last time anyone saw her. Oh, I hope she kept the dog. That year, spring came sooner than expected. The dead were buried, the fields sown, and finally the good townsfolk of Centilli could go on with their lives. Soon, the legend of the werewolf was known in the whole country, mixed with blatant lies and various reinterpretations, and only the people of Centilli knew the whole truth. Fantastic! We saved the town! End scenario. And that's my phone. So, that has been your playthrough of Time of Legend, Destinies, Kickstarter, 24th of September, 2019, as I said. Hope you enjoyed that, and hopefully we'll be back soon with some more playthroughs. Thank you.